Good evening, and welcome to the Nobody Asked to Me Guy Show. Guys, I'm your host, Melvin Casey Lars, and as you know, we do not waste your time with cookie cutter questions and doing all of the talking. We like to let our guests express themselves. And as you know, this evening, we're talking about wisdom wrapped in greatness. Now, you have a twofer. You know, many times you, you watch commercials on TV and you get things in the newspaper and people talk about giving a sale. Well, we don't have a sale, but we have a twofer. Now, what is the twofer? We have two great men, first of all. And we have two great men that have been very successful in their endeavors as men, as human beings, and as coaches. Now, most of us uh, love sports and we love athletics. Many times we never get to talk to those men and women that are prolific in the lives of others as it comes to that. Well, tonight you have a twofer, as I said, in the persons of Coach Davis Weathersby and Coach Marcellus Singleton. Uh, both happen to hail from Mississippi. Both happen to have worked uh, at Mississippi Valley State University. And uh, both have garnered numerous, numerous, numerous awards, uh, both in the, at the high school ranks and their college ranks. Now, we're going to give you a little bit about both coaches, and then the coaches will elaborate further on parts that they might like to talk about. Now, and it's generational. Those of you that watch my show, and you see me looking at you on the monitor, those of you that watch my show, you know, we like to talk about generation. And you know how I am. I do not apologize for being black. Many times there's so much negative information out there. Tonight, as most of our shows, it's generational. You have Coach Weathersby, who just celebrated a happy 90th birthday. You have Coach Marcellus, uh, who's not there. <laughs> you have me, who's not there. However, we are generational. So we want, just wanted to share that with you guys, and we're happy that you're here. So listen, we're going to talk a little bit here now. Coach Davis Wells is a former football player of Alcorn State University, and from 1951 to 55. Now, he was named co-captain of the team in 54. Uh, Davis Wells be also lettered in track at Alcorn State University. He graduated from Alcorn in 1955. Upon completion of graduation from Alcorn State University, he was hired as girls basketball coach now. From there, guys, he won four state championships. He was named head coach. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, coach of the year. He just moved on. They went into football, and he has a, a total combined record of 112 victories, 26 losses, and six ties. I mean, man, people would give their right arm to have that kind of record. Uh, and, and coaching anything, let alone a sport as popular as football. Now, he was also athletic director and uh, head football coach, and I'm proud to say he was one of my coaches at Mississippi Valley State University. Coach Wellesby, we have to go on record as we're sharing your information, and I'll talk to them more about that, but I had to let them know that as we were sharing our information. Now, he has an overall record there at 33, 45, and one in eight seasons. He also uh, was named co-coach of the year in the, in the Southwest Athletic Conference, and just uh, being named coach, of the year, co-coach of the year, it doesn't matter, guys. When you are thought of by your colleagues as being one of the best, there's no further explanation. Now, we'll talk a little further, but we're going to talk about Coach Singleton. Because as I said, guys, this is generational, and this is a twofer, and you have two great men on this platform tonight who both happen to hail from Mississippi. Now, Coach Marcella Singleton is a native of Raymond, Mississippi. He's the son of the late John Singleton and Rachel Singleton. He's a product of Summer Hill High School in Clinton, Mississippi. Uh, he coached at Mississippi. He's a, a graduate of Mississippi Valley State University, uh, University of Southern Mississippi as well, in Hattiesburg. Now, Coach also is a military gentleman. And, and I do want to touch upon that a little bit. At Providence, Michigan, he's a military gentleman, and we'll get to that. We'll back up to that in a moment. But I do want to talk about the fact that he's uh, at Providence Missionary Baptist Church. Co Singleton serves as chairman of the deacon board and a committee member of the youth ministry. Uh, that's appropriately titled, entitled, yes, uh, your enrichment sessions. Now, during vacation Bible school, he teaches physical education, coordinates the first aid station, and drives the church van. Coach also participates in other church ministries. 
Now, his additional membership affiliations comprise in the Floor County Association of Educators, Mississippi Association of Educators, the National Association of Education, and Mississippi Association of Coaches. Now, Coach coached and taught physical education for 39 years. Starting from 1971 to 73, he was athletic director and head football coach at Marshall Junior High School in Carrollton. He also coached at LaFleur County High School from 1977 to 2005, where he serves as athletic director and head football coach at LaFleur County High School, where he also coached track and field events. Uh, he coached at Mississippi Valley. I want to make sure I get these, and coach will correct me if I have these uh, facts, if they're not facts in, this, in the length of time that he coached at Mississippi Valley. But I'm, I'm uh, Coach Singleton received countless awards and recognitions, some of which included uh, in 1971, the Army Commendation Medal for Meritorious Service in Vietnam, 1971 Certificate of Appreciation from the President of the United States, also uh, being involved in the war in Vietnam, 1979 Outstanding Young Men in America, 2000 Teacher of the Month, LaFleur County High School, 2005 Who's Who, and the list just doesn't stop. Among American teachers, he was also twice selected Providence Man of the Year, and Coach Singleton is featured in two books. As a matter of fact, he and Coach Weathersby are featured in Grid Iron Gold and uh, Grid Iron Glory. Now, guys, with that, uh, Coach also coached the All-Star Coach North and South. He and Coach Weathersby both uh, coached in All-Star Games. Uh, the Delta Valley Conference Coach of the Year was Coach Singleton in 1980. Delta Valley Coach of the Year Championship in 1989. Uh, state Playoffs in 1990. And the list goes on. So these great gentlemen, that's why I want to share with you in this opening statement that as we talk about wisdom wrapped in greatness, is that we want you to understand that you have before you tonight two great men of honor. Let me say that again. You have two great men of honor. So I'm happy to see every time I glance at my monitor with the thumbs going up and the hearts going up. So you guys are tired of hearing me talk. So let's talk to our guest. Coach Davis Wellesby, uh, since you are our elder statesman, sir, uh, we, we like to start with you. Would you like to share with us a little bit more, maybe about some of the things that, that I may have missed in the introduction? Well, uh, Chief, uh, thanks for having me on tonight. Well, Coach, it's, really? a, it's a pleasure. And uh, yes. I'd just like to let you know that uh, I was born and reared in Liberty, Mississippi. Liberty, Mississippi. And I attended Amy County Training School in Gloucester, Mississippi, uh, where I finished in 1951. And I, uh, as you said, I attended Alcorn A&M College at the time, Alcorn State University now. And then uh, I uh, was, a, was blessed to be able to get a job at Coburn High School right out of college. I served as an assistant football coach and head girls basketball coach my first year. And then the uh, head football coach left. And then the next year, they elevated me to athletic director and head football coach. In our first year, we won six games and lost four. In 1956, in 1957, we won the Big Eight Championship. Then in 1958, we repeated, we won the Big Eight Championship again. And of course, during our tenure at the Coleman High School, we won six Northern Division Big Eight Championships and four overall Big Eight Championships. And of course, I had an opportunity to coach some outstanding athletes. During my tenure, we had great support from the community. Uh, our faculty and staff at, at Coleman High School, you know, we were just like a big family. And of course, uh, you uh, set the number of football games that we won. And of course, we had outstanding basketball, baseball, track. Of course, I only coached the girls' track team, but we won championships in all those sports. One year, we won 96 trophies in one year. Wow. And, and of course, uh, we had some outstanding ball players that I coached there. 
And of course, well, Coach uh, George Scott that played with the Boston Red Sox, Willie Richardson that played with the Baltimore Colts, Gloucester Richardson that played with the Kansas City Chiefs, and all the Richardson brothers went to Jackson State. Uh, they had outstanding career there. Then I coached uh, a number of outstanding athletes that went to Alcorn, Robert Brown, uh, Faye Micah, uh, uh, Willie Dukes, Leroy Bob, Elijah Brown, Bo Brown, who went to Tennessee State, and of course, uh, Joe, uh, Mayor, Rosa Mayor went to the University of Dayton. Then we had Walter Patterson that went to University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. And we had some youngsters to go out to Bishop College and different places. So it was an outstanding school. And, uh, and of course, not only did we win in, in football and track, but our academics were high. Our choir had a superior rating. Our band had superior rating. And so we just had an outstanding school. And I was blessed to be a part of that family. Wow, that's that's... That is magnificent. Coach Singleton. First of all, I want to thank you for having me here. Uh, I am a 1964 graduate of Sumner Hill High School in Clinton, Mississippi, where I played linebacker and tight end for my high school. And after high school, I left and went to junior college up in Mirror Home, which is in West Point, Mississippi, there, which is a private school. And we we uh, had a great team there, but our team and school folded. So I always did want to come to Mississippi Valley, and that's where I ended up at. Uh, I left Mississippi Valley in 1968. My graduation class was 69, but I was lucky to get out a little bit early. But after getting out of college, I had a job in Black Hawk, Mississippi. In 1968, I got a job in Black Hawk, Mississippi, which did not last too long because Uncle Sam sent me a letter that says, greetings from the president of the United States. You are now inducted into the United States military. So in 1969, I was inducted to the United States military where I left Mississippi, only been married two months. And you know that that wasn't too enjoyable. But leaving Mississippi, I ended up at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. I ended up at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, and coming out of the country like I did, I, I was already trained how to shoot. But when I left North Carolina, I was the number one soldier in that unit. I became the number one soldier in that unit. And you, as you see right here, it says out of 1,000 soldiers, I was number one. I hit 55 shots out of 60. And from there, I ended up in Oklahoma. And after Oklahoma, I ended up in Vietnam. I stayed in Vietnam an entire year, had a chance, which wasn't beautiful, but I had a chance to go against some of the strongest soldiers in the world, which we won. But I had a chance to meet up on some NVA soldiers, which wasn't nice for them. Now, after coming back from Vietnam, I became the head coach and athletic director at Marshall Junior High School in Carroll. Stayed there two years. And from there, I went to LaFleur County High School in 1977. In 77, when I took that program over, uh, I was there in 73, but in 77, when I took that program over, we had already won a championship in the Delta Valley Conference, which was one of the strongest conferences in the state of Mississippi. After that, I became the head coach, and in 1978, 79, and 80, we only lost, three years, we only lost six games. I became an all-star coach. I became an all-star coach for the North, and with the North, 
my job was to coordinate the defense for the North State. And some of the players that I had for the North State was Gerald Baylor's, one of the finest nose guards in the NFL. And then you had Bud Brown, who played with the Miami Dolphins. And I had a kid named Matthew Lovelady that went over to the New York Giants. Now, the high school football players I had in my high school in the floor County was phenomenal. None of my kids could play unless he made 75 and above. I had 56 football players and each one made 75 and above. I had kids to go to the SWAC. Uh, I had kids to go to Alcorn State. <laughs> I had kids to go to Jackson State. I had kids to go to the SEC. And two of those kids made, made all Americans, those big Thompson boys. They made all American in the SEC. Then I had one kid to go to the Big 12. I had in football, very successful. And I thank God for the kids that I had. I thank God for giving me the ability to coach those kids. I had seven, and I never say I want them because, you know, a coach is only good as his players. But we had seven championships in football. And I had eight championships in track and field. Only because I had great athletes, great coaching staff, and a great leader in my father that's in heaven. I love Mississippi Valley. I met Coach Wesby at Mississippi Valley, and Coach Wesby had one of my players. And one of those players was named Bernard Grant. He could carry that football. And Coach was one of the greatest coaches ever come to Mississippi Valley, and I want to congratulate him for that. We always, and I heard you say this, and I will amen to that. I love being black, and I love teaching black kids because I've taught all, all kinds of kids now, but I love teaching black kids because they need us and they can't get along without us. Now, uh, after Vietnam, I received a letter from the president of the United States. And that president of the United States congratulated me on my combat ability. We won't go into all of that one. But he, he congratulated me on my combat ability and the things that I've done in combat. And I want everybody to know that this country that we live in is one of the best countries in the world. We just got to, as American citizens, we got to learn how to cooperate and make this country better. I also have a congratulation from my homeboy, I called him Congressman Thomas and Benny Thomas. He's right now, you know the job that he's done up in Washington right now. And I, I will congratulate him for that. Uh, we love him for that. We're going to have to work extremely hard. Coaching taught me how to do things right and how to bring love to our community. Thank you. Wow, that's, 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 that's really powerful. You know, which is, which is an excellent, excellent segue uh, <clears throat> to the process. That, that we're moving to on this program. I'm going to ask Coach Wellesby. I, well, first of all, Coach Wellesby, be as, <clears throat> excuse me, Coach Singlin has said, I think you were one of the greatest, and I didn't know a whole lot about Mississippi Valley. As a matter of fact, I knew very little, and you gave me the opportunity, uh, Coach Singleton. Coach Wellesby gave me the opportunity to Great come to Mississippi Valley and be the best that I could be. And I was, I was blessed to have had some success. And I, I told Coach that I was going to say this tonight, and I'll be brief. One of the biggest mistakes I made in my entire life was to not remain under his tutelage for four years. And, and I'm not embarrassed to, to say it nationally uh, because I, I saw something in coach as I was there. I saw how he coached. I saw how he cared for us. You know, I saw his tenacity and his concern. And being a 19-year-old, 
you know, having buddies, you know, you guys chasing girls together, all of that. And, yeah. and, the, and the buddy not the buddy not faring so well, and he gets this grunt. And I told Coach I had to tell this story nationally. And my, he gets this grunt, and he wants to leave because he's not faring so well. So, you know, we're buddies. We, we've been kindergarten together. And I said, hey, oh, no, man, I tried to talk him out of going home. He was so determined to go. So I said, oh, man, well, I guess, come on, man, I guess we'll transfer. And and so I, I had to give Coach, I have to give Coach his props. You know, a lot of times we never, as players, or we never as human beings, and especially, uh, dare I say, as men, because, you know, sometimes we can be uh, so full of ourselves with our machismo, is that we never say to another man that we apologize. And even yeah. though it's been many years later, yeah, yeah. I want to apologize because coach gave me a great opportunity. And that was one of the best things that could have happened to me, coach. I was one of, and, and I'm, I'm saying this so coach can under, really understand the opportunity he gave me. I was thought of as being yeah. one of the players in the, in the Louisiana area period, Shreveport, Bojo specifically, but I was always an activist. <laughs> So I was right in the brunt of, of integration and I was raising all kind of cane. And, 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 and by the way, I, I, I call our quote, I call our quote, white sisters and brothers are less melanated brothers and sisters. Well, I was never received well by my less melanated coaches. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm playing, yeah. But when it came to other things and, and I just, uh, you know, sports writers would come and they'd ask me, well, you know, your coach say, you coach say you, you, you're not coachable, and you coach say this, and you coach say that. So it scared a lot of colleges away from me, especially the white colleges. Right. But coach Weathersby was a brother, as we all are. He was looking for athletes. And I don't know what my coach may have said to him, Coach Riley Stewart, whom I love dearly, but coach gave us an opportunity, me and, and, and that friend that was disgruntled gave us an opportunity to to come to Mississippi Valley and to play for him. And I have to give him his flowers while he's alive. One of the greatest opportunities I've ever had in my life. And I've been very uh, blessed. I've, I've, I've been able to uh, meet a lot of people, do a lot of things. Uh, as a matter of fact, coach, I got to tell coach this, this story as you and him finished. I met Mr. Emlyn Tunnell. Most people don't know who Emlyn Tunnell is. He was the first African-American to go into the NFL Hall of Fame. I'm sitting at Louisiana Tech University, where I have been kicked off the team, by the way, because, because of my activism. And this gentleman was asking me about a player that he had seen at another university. And nobody believed this third to this day. And the player he was asking about was yours truly. I would not have, he was a, a scouting with the New York Giants. I had no idea who Mr. Tanea was. I had never met him, had never seen him. So I just have to give Coach his flowers while he's alive. Coach gave me that opportunity to be able to uh, not only continue a, a great football career, but to be able to go as a free agent uh, with the Oilers and with the Raiders, never with the Giants. I, I, I didn't meet the, the uh, weight requirement for the position. However, I just, Coach needs to know that. So, I, if you will, Coach, with the young men, and, and Coach Singleton, I'm going to ask you the same question. Yes, sir. As you have had the opportunities to work with young men, what, 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 what advice would you give to those that may be like me, that, that others say you had talent, you felt like you had talent, God bless you with the talent, but you will... Sometimes I'll say now, as I've matured, you 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 didn't know how to really manage the focus on what you were trying to stand for. What advice would you would you give to a a young man like myself, who was dedicated to the game, who was blessed to be a part of the game? And you you mentioned about your kids uh, had at least seventy five, who was always a a great student, but I just. Uh, I guess I guess maybe at that time my less melanated coaches prop maybe did see me as not being coachable because I I, I just uh, did not think they had my best interests at heart. I know that's a loaded question for me. I've had kids like you, 
<laughs> and uh, what I did, see those kids, sometimes you have to look at it. 70% of my kids that I coached, father was not there. My case. So what I did with my kids, I sit him down. And I told him that Jesus died for all of us. He came down and he shared his blood. And I said, listen, you are just as good or better than anybody else. What you need to do is settle down and figure out and you have done a good job with that. Which way you want to go? Mm -hmm. Anything that you want of me, because I told all of my kids, look, I love you. Anything that you want of me, if I can't get it, I'm going to find a way to do it. And when you do that for kids, you can see the change in him. He will start to do better. He will start to rely on you. I had kids that some instructors told me, Coach Singer, how on earth are you fooling with him? I said, number one, you got to understand <laughs> the kid is a human being. Yeah. And that kid needs guidance and love just like everybody is. So that's what you do. I had a kid that people told me he never would be anything in life. Yeah. But I guarantee you, he finished from Washington University with a law degree, and he now practiced in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. All of it because Singleton put his arms around him, told him he loved him, told him that he would give him anything he wanted if he had it. And man, he, had, he calls me at least three or four times a year right now. Wow, that's great. What would I do? Show him love. You show him love, they're going to react. Absolutely. That was what you were saying early on. Yes, sir. But uh, I was uh, waiting to, to tell you about the second part of my career. Okay, please. And that's when I uh, left Coleman High School in 1970. Uh, when they uh, when they integrated the schools, uh, I was not considered for the head football coach at the high school here because of the color of my skin. And that's why I left. I care for you. My skin. I was not considered, so I didn't accept the position. So uh, I got a call from a good friend of mine, Coach Moreno Castle, and they were looking for head football coach at Ski. So I went to Tuskegee, I was interviewed for the head football coach job there. And when I got back, Dr. White at Mississippi State College sent for me to come over there. And I went over there and they offered me a job. I took a job as a defensive backfield coach. Okay, it looks like Coach is having a little technical difficulties, and, and we, we all know how uh, electronics work. Now, now Coach, you, Coach what, uh, uh, Singleton, you made some interesting, very interesting comments overall, but military and football was, I mean, obviously, I know war is, 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 and, and is, is, is not sports and many times people refer to uh sports and say oh man you know we 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 going to war does okay coach are you back yeah, yeah. I'm back. i don't know go ahead go ahead coach it keep cutting off yes sir do you I, hear me yes sir i can hear you but, but go ahead what i was about to say is I accepted the job at Mississippi Valley State of Defense Backfield Coach. And then uh, in July, the head football coach left and they elevated me to the head football coaching position. 
So uh, in the, at course, that was right after the strike. A whole lot of ball fell that missed at home. And uh, it was just like when I got that pressure, it was just like you were fighting the best. <laughs> so what we had to do, we discovered on one ball game that uh, first year, and then uh, we went out to play it up on that to you guys in Louisiana. Because uh, I, I saw a uh, point person play in Brighton, Alabama. Uh, the day that we played Miles College. So uh, I wanted to see him play that night. And I said, well, I need that boy. So I went and uh, talked with his parents. And, and of course, we established a good relationship. And I was able to recruit him. And then we had some more youngsters uh, to our list. And so we were able to get some outstanding athletes, and then we stopped being competitive. So I'll never forget uh, those guys that I coached with Mr. Valley. You know, we were just like a family, and we we're still a family. And quite a few of those guys came to celebrate with me on my birthday. And of course, you were there as well. I was happy to see you. The, you have to let them know that you love them, and you've got to be. Firm and fair with them. That's why I was coaching in high school. I always told them, I said, you need to have a religious faith. I told them all the time that an education comes first and everything else after. And we accept that togetherness and that family atmosphere. And so uh, that's what I like about the guy that I coached down three years, even in high school and in college, I still have great contact with the guys that I coach in college and high school. And I love all of them. Wow, that's great. Coach, <clears throat> I, I was asking Coach Singleton, oftentimes we as football players, uh, any sport, people say, oh, you know, we're in this thing together. You know, we got to go, we, we go on the war and that type. And Coach Singleton, what I was asking was, is having been a military man, having actually been in war, what is your take when you hear athletes use a sport as a parallel to re really putting your life on the line? Is, is that something that, that you really think about uh, as a gentleman that have been physically in a war and have been a top athlete yourself and have coached top athletes? Does that ever enter, enter your, your mind as to and I know this is a long question, as to, well, yeah, it's similar, but no, this is two, these are two totally different things. Because I often wonder about that. i tell you what. Uh, football, as you know, you, Coach, Des Coach Wesby and I, we all played that game. It's a violent sport. Yes. Uh, my kids had a tendency to call me General Pat. <laughs> because football, really, when I went into the military, it was just a breeze. Because the guy that I'm going to call right now, Coach Weathersby, know him because when he was playing at Valley, Coach Weathersby was at Alcorn. I did my research on Coach Weathersby. Uh, Coach Willie James McLemore, uh, he and those guys from uh, Greenwood, they all was friends, but Coach Weatherby always came out on top of those guys. But anyway, uh, yeah, when when uh, football players, they do think about football and war because it is. Uh, if you can survive, On the football field, you got to stay alert. If you stay alert, you stay alive. If you go to sleep, you're going to get killed. That's what how I was taught in the military because my boots was on the ground. I was not a door gunner, which I was, I was wanting to be a door gunner, but I volunteered to be a door gunner, but I was sent over into the artillery. 
And being an artillery, that if you're good at it, you're going to get a lot of, you're going to get a lot of incoming rockets attack. And you have to be on alert to stay alive. Yeah. Football and the military is closely related because both of them, you got to make contact with the enemy. And the one that stays alert and pay attention to what's going on is going to win. And okay. May, no. Go ahead. I'm sorry. The fifth month, which is May, I got hit running from incoming rockets. Well, now let me tell you how that was. It started, it was 122 millimeters. I saw the rockets go off, but the Vietnamese people wasn't good at really plotting so they could hit you with them. They just put them on a bamboo pole and put them in water so they'll shoot off. And they were everywhere. But anyway, that night, I was running because I saw the explosions. I was running and I it hit and hit a brick or something. I don't know how I got hit. But anyway, I know I woke up in the hospital. Uh, when I woke up, they had performed surgery on me. And now I can kind of, it's humorous now, because when I went in, I didn't know where I was. When I woke up, the nurse told me, she said, Sergeant Singleton, we was getting ready to call a cold A on you. I said, are you out your mind? Cold A mean you did. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I woke up and I had to stay in the hospital three extra weeks because of the injury that I received. God blessed me to, to get well there was on my way back to my unit, military tough, especially when you war zone. I had to walk about a half a mile to my unit. Couldn't nobody come pick me up because everybody was out on the LZ. But when I got back to my unit, my commanding officer came to me and he said, Sergeant Singleton, Dana got killed this morning. You have to go out to OP legionnaire at fat city show me where fat city is on the map where fat city was 10 miles from the cambodian border well what's come down through the cambodian border you got the ho chi Minh trail now we got to cut that trail off so we can cut him off that was the biggest firefight firefight that i had in my whole year there, because we got attacked, not rocket attack, we got attacked by the man himself. Well, they got inside our perimeter. Hope I don't dream about this tonight. They got inside our perimeter, but they didn't get out. Okay. Uh, we killed everybody. Wow. Uh, we only lost one boy from Mississippi. But football, and military, they're just alike. Okay. It's tough. And being a college football player, you know it is. Oh, yeah. Uh, I coach the offensive line at Mississippi Valley. And you know what the old practice feel out there in Mississippi Valley? If you screwed up out there and you're the offensive line, well, you know what the woods said, don't you? <laughs> you had to get to the woods and back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Coach yeah. Singleton, you know what? As you share that, I, I see Coach Weather been laughing. I have to share with Coach. When Coach recruited me, I was a nose tackle, <laughs> and <laughs> I, I had no, I had no experience, Coach, at offensive line. Yeah, none. And what I respected then, and what I respect now about Coach Weathersby, Coach Weathersby was looking for football players. We had an All-American named Ted Washington. Yo, I knew I probably wasn't going to see the field. But when Coach put me over on that offensive line, what Coach did, may, maybe not even knew as well as he thought he did, 
is physicality had always been my game. Yeah. <laughs> and when Coach put me on that offensive line, man, I, I, and the coach, I don't know how Coach felt about this, but I blossomed because of what you just said. Yes. You know, if you don't perform, you go either live or you go die. That's right. <laughs> and I was not ready, Coach. I was not ready to die. Yeah, you And team. Yes, sir. You come to God. We tell you you have to fight, though, and we say we got to fight. You got to fight. <laughs> when you when you start talking about fighting, you talking about war. And then uh, right. that's why we have to prepare you and put you through all the drills. Now, when it's going to get tough, the tough get good. That's what it's all about. And, Coach, I'm grateful. I, like I said, you as I sit here and listen to you and sit here and listen to Coach Singleton, I'm grateful because – and 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 I I I have to say, like I told Coach Singleton, I'm I'm really blessed that I get to meet him. You know, just 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 hearing him, knowing the kind of man he is, watching the kind of things he went through, having the opportunity to play for you, and and having you make make that very clear. At first, Coach, I'm not gonna tell you no tale. I'm like, man, I don't play no offensive guard. You know, I'm I'm in the room just raising cane. <laughs> with my roommate who was Deke. You may not remember Deke was from uh Deke was from from where was Deke from? Deke was down off the coast of Mississippi somewhere. No, and I'm in there just raising cane. Okay. The Gulfport. I'm in there just raising cane with Deke. I said, man, I was a nose tackle. I don't play no offensive guard. Blah 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 blah. So what Deke said to me, coach, got my attention. So so Deke said, Well, he said, if you don't want to play offensive guard. That means my job just gonna be easier. <laughs> now, those, that's exactly what he said to me, coach. <laughs> but, yeah. but, 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 coach, I, 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 I would like to ask you: when you were working with with with, with those high school kids and on the Mississippi Valley, and you shared with us how you were fortunate enough to come in as defensive back coach, the head coach uh, moved on for whatever reason, you became the head coach. Now. I'm going to ask you this question. You don't have to answer me, but as an athlete, I know part of it, you took it as a challenge, but was there any fear knowing what you were up against? No, no, it's no, no fear, man. You, you're a ball player. That's what, that's what, that's what you, that's what we teach you. Don't fear anybody. Mm -hmm. You respect them, but you don't fear them. No, there's no fear there, but I knew that uh, I had a big job ahead because uh, the previous record at the school and coming in right after a, a, a strike that was going to be an uphill battle, but I was willing to face that challenge. Okay. Okay. Coach Singleton? And Coach, you know, uh, and, and of course, you know, uh, we were fortunate enough to, to bring in some good athletes. You were one of them, but you left. Of course, but you weren't your own boy. You had to be a chamberlain. Yes, sir. Well, Coach, you know yeah. what I appreciated about yeah. Valley? Yeah. As you talk about chamberlain, and see, when I started for you as a freshman, I was really proud of not only myself, but I was proud of you because you said to us, everybody is going to get an equal chance to play. And I had heard a lot of stories, you know, about going to college and, you know, if you're a freshman, you'd never see the field and you, know, you probably got four or five guys in front. I heard all those stories. But when I came to play for you, I didn't know all the dynamics. But I, I, I did know this, as you and Coach Singleton is sharing with me right now, is that you knew it was war and you knew you had to battle. And Ted, why, you know, Coach, you, you probably know this because, you know, you know, he'll hear the guys talk in the locker room, but nobody wanted to deal with Ted. Coach, I couldn't wait. <laughs> I couldn't wait. 
I could yeah. not wait because I ain't gonna lie to you, Coach. I was cocky, and I felt like I could be just as physical, even though Ted was a senior. I was a freshman. I couldn't wait, and the yeah. rest is history. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. The rest is history. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And when I got to start at Valley as a freshman, I was just I was just beside myself. And 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 Coach Singleton, before I ask you and Coach another question, I, I don't want to talk to you guys to death, but I I just have to say to Coach again is that that is the that is the one of the premier times of my life when I really started to really really respect coaches that say to me. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, Coach Wesby, that probably what got me in trouble at Louisiana Tech. Part of it <laughs> is when coaches say, everybody's going to have a fair opportunity and we're going to play the best player. Well, Coach Weathersby, I'm, 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 I'm giving you credit for that because you deserve it. And I am saying to myself that as I mature, I understand as I'm older. But, and, and I go on record, and I may offend some people, but that was not the case when I transferred. I heard a lot of the rhetoric, but it was not always the case. And 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 that was tough to deal with, not only as an athlete, but as a person. So again, let me give you your flowers now. But I want to say to, to you and coach, and ask you a question, coach, especially about Mississippi Valley. What in the world, uh, Coach Singleton, I, I have to ask coach this about Mississippi Valley. What in the world gave you gentlemen the idea to have us pushing this car down this <laughs> down this dirt road for it seemed like an eternity as part of getting in shape? <laughs> well, the car, the car that you were pushing, and Coldwell being being instead that you're doing it. Uh, was to strengthen your legs and your thighs and your arms. It did that. Yeah. And so it, it probably, you know how athletes are, some of the things that I did while playing football. Uh, matter of fact, let me, let me say this to you before I go on. I did have a chance to, to play professional baseball. Okay. Uh, my mother, the same guy that, drafted George Scott out of Greenville, gave me an opportunity, his name was Ed Scott, gave me an opportunity to play because I, people told me I was a great baseball player, but my mother wouldn't let me because I was only 17 and she hadn't had a kid to finish college that ended in my baseball career. But as a coach, I came, into a school that was at first predominantly white. And that school had a terrific weight room. And my players was already introduced to weights. But I had, and this gonna really just tickle you, I had 10 tractor ties. Then I hooked up with a harness. All of my linemen had to get down and drag that tractor tie 50 yards and give it to somebody else and they bring it back. That probably made them mad, but I did find out, and God, I, I, I love the Lord, most of the teams that my team played, we beat them. We beat mm -hmm. them in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. We were definitely in shape, and we were a lot stronger. Mm -hmm. So pushing that car made you mad as you know what, but you got stronger. That's true. Because, Coach, you know what? I don't know if, if, if Coach Weatherby remember this or not, but <clears throat> they called a – I think Spencer, Spencer was running the ball. And we, they called it, what was it, what, a 30 trap or something like that? Well, you know, you got this All-American, Ted Washington, sitting there at oh. Nose Guard. I'm, I'm sorry, Coach, go ahead. Go ahead, Coach. No, go on. No, I'm just saying, 
And, and I said, you can go on, tell it. Okay. And you got this all American sitting there at nose guard that everybody is terrified of. And coach, I'm just going to say it. People are going to say he lying. But me, I was looking forward to the challenge. That's, that's the kind of athlete I like. Yes, sir. Coach, we ran that trap. Wiped Ted big butt out of there. Coach didn't take me off the field. <laughs> and I appreciate him for that. Yeah. They, yes. they could have said, well, he's a freshman. He can't do this. He can't do that. But I, and that's why I keep telling coach is that he built some things in me from a coaching point of view that had transcended a lot of the things that I'd heard about going to college. You know, well, it don't matter how good you are, the freshman, you know, you never play in this, that, and the third. But the champion that I was blessed to pay to play for in Davis Weathersby did not allow that to happen. He wanted to put the best 22 on the field that he could find. And I will forever, and I have to tell him as we have this conversation, I will forever be grateful to him for that because it said a lot to me. It gave me an opportunity that I thought I, quite honestly, I thought I'd probably be maybe a junior before I had the opportunity to even show that. It made me believe what I thought about myself is that I don't care if you were a senior, junior, whatever, once we strap it up and put that helmet on, you got to bring it. And that's just the way I, that's just the way I felt about it. Mm -hmm. So coach, I have to give you uh, my hats off to you, sir. Coach Singleton, what is it that, 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 that drove you to be the champion that you are? Now I'm gonna ask you and coach the same question. Okay. What drove me to be the coach that I am right now? Uh, I didn't come off of a white man's plantation. Mm -hmm. I came off of my father and my grandfather's 244 acres of land. I was the only boy, which means I did all the work. And I said, I will never ever be a farmer. <laughs> my grandfather uh, was just phenomenal. My grandfather never worked for anybody but himself. My grandfather had over 200 head of cattle. Uh, but he thought nobody could do anything but me. So farming with my dad and my grandfather made me realize that I couldn't be getting dirty forever. I had to, I had to get better. Okay. Uh, so well, when, I, when I started to coach, losing, and I have it right now, I have it written down right now. To me, what made me the coach that I am, losing is a sin. I couldn't stand it. I, I wanted to beat everybody. I wanted to beat people because it was said that black coaches didn't know how to coach. Well, they found out when they ran up against Coach Zim. And I wasn't going up against Coach Weathersby. I was going up against the others. I beat them 85% of the time. Mm -hmm. That's what drove me. Mm -hmm. Wow. Coach Weathersby, yeah. what drove you to become the champion that you are today? Well, it's like you, Coach Sanderson was saying that he came up on a farm. I came up on a farm, too. You know, when you come up on a farm, you got to work. You do a lot of work. And so but what happened to me was uh, I went to live with my uh, sister when I was nine years of age in Gloucester, Mississippi. And that's how I got involved with uh, football. But I had to go back to the farm during the summer to work. And then when I finished high school, 
I went to New Orleans and got a job at the racetrack. And I was swimming from head to toe. And I decided I didn't want to do that the rest of my life. And so my uh, high school coach told me that, well, you know, they're going to start a new football, football team at Mississippi Vocational College. And he said, that'd be a good place for you to go. And so I came home and he said, no, they're not going to start the football team at Mississippi Vocational. But if you want to play some football, I'll take you out to Alcorn and ask Coach Dwight Fisher to give you a trial. So I went out to Alcorn on trial with 125 ball players, and I made the team. And so, and the rest is history. So when I was at Alcorn, we had a great coaching staff, Coach Dwight Fisher, Coach, Coach uh, Eugene Simmons, and Coach Lewis Cruz. And so they, in me, desire to want to win because we were winning at all corner at the time. And so when I got to Cohen High School, uh, we my first year we didn't win. But in, in the next year, when the head coach left, Coach Moore was coming out of service. We had played football together at Alcorn. He was my roommate. So I hired him in his hometown to be my assistant coach. So in 14 years, we didn't, we didn't have a losing season. Nice. And so and we had two undefeated seasons. Our last undefeated season, we went 11 and 0. And we, in the 11 ball games, we only had 30 points scored against us. So uh, that winning tradition was a part of me when I got to Mississippi Valley. That's why I worked so hard to recruit guys, Parnell, Robert Gass, Smiley, uh, McGill, and all those guys that were there when you were there. That's why we was bringing those guys in so we could be competitive. And so uh, I always wanted to win, but I knew one thing about winning, that you had to put the work in, you had to pay the price, but you also had to have some Jims and Joes that, that was willing to pay the price. So I enjoyed my career. And so uh, I look back now and say, well, we're doing. I thank good Lord for blessing me to be able to coach guys like you. Thank you, Coach. <laughs> Gentlemen, last thing, and I'm going to let you go. I, I know I kept you way too long. I love it. What would, go, what, what would you say in, in, in our clothing to us as, 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 as men? You know, I, I have a lot of I have, I have a lot of young people that come to my show, and and we're always trying to impress upon them about manhood and being men. And I know that's a lot of, you know, that's another show all by itself. But 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 just in our closing statements, what advice can you give to us just about being men? Well, the one thing I, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Well, the one you got to have a good attitude. You got to be willing to work. See, if, if you're not willing to work, if you have a good attitude, you know your attitude to turn your altitude. So that's important. I tell youngsters all the time that make sure that you work on having a good attitude and that you're willing to work hard, you're willing to pay the price. And you got to be able to get along with people. That's important. That's that, that's important in order in order to be successful in life. And of course, one other thing I like to say is the most 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 youngsters that have a religious faith, then it, that carries them a long way because they learn how to get along with people and how to respect people. So I always preach that to my youngsters that you need to have a religious faith. And when it comes to going to school. And getting an education, I always tell them that, like I told you guys, and the education comes first, and everything else after. Yes, you have to prepare yourself for this word. This is important. All right, Co Coach. Before Coach Singleton, before you give us your, your closing statement, let me say to our audience, so these young men can understand that this is not something Coach Weatherby just saying. 
Coach Weatherby brought brought us into summer school. When I left Valley, I had 36 hours. I'd only been in Valley a year and two summers. So when he talk about educate, and I talk to my young men, when he talks about getting education and things like that, it's not all these horror stories you hear where you know they won't let you take this class, so many classes, they have to keep you down to so many hours to stay eligible and things like that. You want to be cautious about that kind of stuff because you have a life after sports. And I can speak personally with Coach Weathersby on this on this uh, platform, is that I was a sophomore when I was supposed to be a sophomore, didn't have to worry about el eligibility and things of that nature. We never got in trouble for going to lab like we were supposed to. Yeah, we had to practice and it was super hot and we had to practice very hard, but we had to do our academics. But I, I just wanted to share that coach with our young people. So Coach Singleton, in your closing statement, if you don't mind, if you just kind of share with us your 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 rendition, I know it's great. Young men, young black men, you want to always tell the truth. Tell the truth and be a man. Don't want people to give you anything. Open up the door and you'll get it yourself. Do not depend on, and I'm from the bottom of my heart, welfare is not for a black man. Workfare is for a black man. You want to earn it. By the way, my son, my son played quarterback for me. I didn't give him one inch, but he turned out to be a tremendous player. Uh, tell the truth. Love your parents. Respect your parents. The lady that you marry, always treat her with dignity and respect. Take care of your kids. The rest is history. Thank you for having me. Uh, I enjoyed this. This work makes me better. I am a two-time All-Star coach. I've been up against some of the best coaches in America. Coached in Soldiers Field twice. Won both times we were there. And I loved it. We will never, ever be great if we don't think great. <clears throat> Thank you for having me. Wow. Coach Singleton and Coach Weatherby, I would do both of you a great injustice if we don't touch upon the book. I think it's the Golden Lion. I, I look back at my notes, but but can you can one of you or both of you? Yes, sir. Can one of you or both of you give us a little bit about that about what that book is about, please? This book of Green Iron Gold. It's a book that is written by legendary coaches in the state of Mississippi where the authors feel is some of the best coaches in this state and America. So out of these coaches, <coughs> 108 is in this book. Only eight of us are black. So I'm not saying that we were better, but what I'm saying is we got noticed. You know, it was an honor to be uh, selected to be in that book. And uh, that's what happened uh, when you were uh, willing to work hard and, and pay the price. Then because uh, I
brothers, sisters, what's DC? Okay, looks like we lost coach again. Coach, allow me to say to you, and I see coach coming back. Okay, coach, you, you're muted again. But but I want to say to you, Coach Singleton, is that you're just a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal young man. I'm going to say young man because you are a young man. Thank and you. all the things that you've done and all the accomplishments uh, that you've had, and it's just it's, it's just phenomenal. And it shouldn't be a secret. And And I say to you, and it won't be a secret after tonight <laughs> because once we get this to our engineer and, and they get through editing, uh, as I said, we, we're going to launch it. We're going to launch it on YouTube and some other platforms. But it's just a, a shame sometimes how great men like Coach Marcella Singleton and great men like Coach Davis Weathersby are secrets across the globe. Many times people in our hometowns or people in towns close by may know of the greatness of a Marcellus Singleton uh, of a Davis Weathersby, but many people across the, the world does not know. So I just, my hat is off to both of you for the greatness that uh, you've been blessed to achieve, for the wisdom that you show, and just for the men that you are. And I just want to take my hat off to both of you again. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're this is the second book that I'm in. This said Gridiron Glory. Okay. This book says Gridiron Go. Okay. Like Coach Weatherby said, you have to be doing your job both on and off the field. Mm -hmm. I thank God for you. I thank God for my family. And I thank God for letting me live to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much. Coach Wesby, Coach Singleton, yeah. it's, it's been great. It's been great. Oh, yeah. Man, and, you know, I always say it now, you, you put God first, depend on him, and he will, he will, he will take you where you want to go. Yes, sir. If you follow his command. Yes, Thank sir. You. So gentlemen, we have to do this again. Yeah, uh, just, just to have an open conversation and do it live. We have to do this again. But I want to say tonight, it's been a pleasure. This has been the Nobody Asked Me Guy Show. I'm your host, Melvin Casey Lars. I've been very blessed, and I do repeat that. I've been very blessed to have had the opportunity to sit down and talk with two great Americans in the persons of Coach Davis Weathersby and Coach Marcellus Singleton. It's, it's been great. And all of the hearts and all of the, the thumbs that you guys have been giving these gentlemen have just uh, been super. So we just want to thank you guys for being here. Coaches, it's been great. It's been a great night. We're not going to keep you any longer. I just want to say God bless each and every one of you, and we will keep this communication open. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Have a great night, gentlemen. Thank you.